Borja Sotomayor is a senior lecturer in computer science at the University of Chicago, where he teaches a variety of classes on programming, software development, and networks. While you may not be able to tell from the way he speaks, uh, he is originally from Spain. He moved to Chicago when he was 23 and has been living here ever since. Uh, besides being a uh, dyed-in-the-wool uh, computer geek, I guess you'd call him, uh, Borja is also an amateur scurriologist, the study of squirrels, a hobby that his friends have described as amusing, a bit off, and possibly a red flag. But he is not here to talk about either computers or squirrels, because he, there is another thing he enjoys, and that is going outside of his comfort zone. Borja, help close this thing out. Where do we start? So uh, let's talk about comfort zones. Um, as an introverted computer geek who often suffers from imposter syndrome, uh, being here and talking to all of you is as far as I can get from my comfort zone. And thank you for making me the closer. I did not expect that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, but that's good. I, th I actually think that going outside your comfort zone is a good thing to do uh, now and then. So while I could wax poetic about how to answer this question uh, from a computer scientist perspective, uh, I'm going to go outside my comfort zone. I'm going to talk about something different, which is etymologies, the start of words, and specifically the start of the word start. Now, I realize this sounds like the lazy start to a college essay. Uh, Marion Webster defines start as the place of beginning. Uh, but, but please bear with me, uh, because when I started to look at start, I, you know, maybe you expect start to have some really boring beginning, like uh, from the Latin startare, to begin, which fortunately is not the case. Uh, when I, when the first dictionary that I looked at to see you know, where the start come from, it cited two origins, uh, a Proto-Indo-European uh, root uh, stir and Old English stiort, which mean stiff and tail. So WTF, how do we go from stiff and tail to start? So I went into, deep into the bowels of the University of Chicago library where they have an entire bookshelf devoted to the start of words and some really awesome looking books, some of them from the 19th century. And what those books told me is that uh, start actually has an obsolete meaning that means tail or handle. Now you can still find this meaning in, in modern English uh, in the word uh, red start, which is the name, a type of a bird with a red tail. So the connection to tail is pretty obvious uh, there. Now, how do we go from stiff to start? Uh, you've probably heard the term uh, start naked. Uh, it actually turns out that that word was originally start naked, which came from tail, because it was naked to the tail, yes, that tail. So, <laughs> stark comes from the Old English stark, which means stiff, which comes from that root we mentioned earlier. By the way, we also get stork from stark, which is a bird that stands stiffly. Uh, and uh, uh, stark naked doesn't actually come from stark, but it's just assumed that at some point uh, stark influenced the word. And my completely unproven theory is that it's some sort of erection-related wordplay in the Middle Ages. Uh, so, but where does that leave the verb start? To start, to begin. Well, it turns out this start uh, comes from the Old English stirtan, which means to leap, which is related to the Middle High German sturzen, which, wait for it, is to stand stiffly. Uh, so, uh, to conclude, where do we start besides etymology? So, uh, I learned something cool and awesome by going outside my comfort zone and not fixating on, you know, computer science and so on and so forth. Uh, and I got to share it with all of you. So, I think that a good place to start is by going outside our comfort zone. Thank you.